City Side. Good morning, City Side. We made it yet another Sunday. First Sunday of June. God is just so good. No matter what we are going through and facing in our lives, God is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. I'm just so great to be able to constantly breathe in that loving space, that air, that breath we call life, we call God. Just help us sing this. All of our live streamers, hello. Mm, this is the air. This is the air I breathe. Oh, this is the air I breathe. This is the air I breathe. Your holy, your holy presence, Oh, Woo. yeah. All right, so 
family side, come on and help us with this next one. If you know that you are a friend of God and God is within you, why don't you stand up on your feet and help us bring in this amplified joy, this amplified joy. Hey!
Good morning, Cityside. How are y'all doing this morning? Good. Great. Great. My name is Russ Laguerre. I am one of your assistant ministers in training, and I'm here to tell you about our message. Our mission and our message is that we are leading people into a transformational relationship with God. We bring our spiritual awakening into the world as love, kindness, and compassion in action every single day, which is awesome. All right. So... Uh, we are also a social media friendly spiritual community, so if you want to Instagram or Pinterest or Facebook or tweet or interpret a dance or whatever it might be, uh, feel free to do so. We just ask that you silence your phones during the service today. And um, oh, we actually can go back real quick. We also have a new account name on our Instagram, Cityside Chicago. Thank you. And if it is your first time here, you may notice that all of these chairs have these wonderful yes and cards on them. We would love to get to know who you are, so please, please fill this out. Uh, we promise we will not spam you. We will just put you on our newsletter so that you can get all of the good stuff that's going on throughout the week at Cityside. And uh, now is our time to meet and greet and say hello to our neighbors. So if you could please stand. And uh, this is our icebreaker today. What is the favorite TV show you loved as a kid? I know what Patrick's is. <laughs> <laughs> but I know you guys have some great stuff too. So go ahead, say hello to each other. And uh, thank you for being here today. That's so hard. I know mine. I know yours. concern about a loved one or maybe your pet or a challenge that you're meeting in life just let that go right now and take another deep breath and breathe in the essence of God just breathe it right into your heart and know that as you walk your path today you're guided and directed by a higher spirit, a higher presence, a higher power that is always with you. Some people call it divine inspiration, intuition, or like our song, a friend of God, friend of God with you. As we know that the air we do breathe is full of divine intention, divine ideas, connection, possibilities, presence, principle. All of these truths surround us all the time and they're so available to us. 
And so as you breathe in again, breathe in truth, breathe in knowingness, breathe in who you are in the world of Chicago, this wonderful city is so available to all of us and it's full of laughter, joy, <coughs> fun, and the presence of God is so real here. It's in every face that I see as I walk along the streets and know that as I take in all of this beauty, that I am expressing it back out. I breathe it in and I express it out. And so, I'm grateful, so grateful, so thankful for this city side, for all of the wonderful people that I'm meeting every day, and for my friends here at City Side, my close friends now. And they are wonderful, uplifting, joyful, supportive. The city side is a, a, indeed a magnificent place. I'm so grateful. So grateful for Reverend Mark, his leadership, his love, his care. And I give it right back every day. And so as I look <coughs> these words up now, I just know that they go forward to do their right and perfect work. And please say with me, and so it is. And now remaining in that sweet presence, just remaining for a few more minutes, let's know that divine order is part of our meditation today, and that the order of spirit is always unfolding. I may mistakenly focus on appearances. Prayer is not magic. It's a way for me to change how I see things. And so in my meditation right now, I just let this vision of prayer evolve into a larger picture of the activity of the divine in and through me. I see my open mind to a new revelation of spirit's good. as me, and I gratefully surrender to the spiritual certainty that my life is in divine order. I know that spirit gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to those who have understanding. And so I understand today, as I go into this brief meditation, into my heart.
heart is open wide because I'm only here for God. And so it is. sing a song. And I'm going to sing one today for you. And I already did this one, but I'm going to do it right this time. <laughs> but I want to uh, just quickly just say how grateful I really am for this wonderful family. You know, it's so beautiful to have something to look forward to during the week because things happen and I'm learning right now, you know, how to process those things that happen to you in life. But it's such a beautiful thing to be surrounded and to have a community and to be able to lean on a community of individuals uh, that truly love God, that truly are all about the power of love. And this song that Greg and I wrote together is all about that. Yeah. It's a reflection of growth. It's a reflection of uh, seeing ourselves as we are on this journey of life, especially as we are in the ministry. So I dedicate this to you. I dedicate it to my uh, late aunt. And I dedicate it to anyone that is uh, on that path. So, am I? Am I all that those before me wanted for me? Would I know? Am I grounded in good reason for the seed? That I will sow. For I know that in this lifetime I will never be alone. For I know that in this body I am alone. In my ancient, in the way decades of faith could only. For I 
concerned, I'm a person with a long forgotten road, but I know that in this body I am alone. And at times I feel I'm sorry, other times I fear I'm broke, but I know I'll have tomorrow. For it's everything I am oh, I lost myself And I've lost time I've misplaced it all But I've seen the break of sunshine and I've heard my call <laughs> Give a little extra love to these amazing musicians <laughs> And Greg. <laughs> so, how is life going on your planet? Is everyone following your rules? No. Is everyone doing what they're supposed to do? <laughs> we talked about that previously, that our mind is like its own planet. And you live on it. And you expect everyone else to follow your rules. But they live on their planet. And when rules collide, when worlds collide, when planets collide, that's when it becomes challenging, but that's when we're called to surrender and let go and let something greater rise up inside of us. My focus today is on a wonderful little um, one, two, three, four, five, six words. <laughs> Principle is not bound by precedent. If you've been around the New Thought teachings, the Science of Mind teachings, like some people here have been, you've heard that before. But that might be a new idea for you. Principle is not bound by precedent. Alice laughed. There's no use trying, she said. One can't believe in possible things. I dare say you haven't had much practice, said the Queen. I was actually trying to do a queen's voice earlier. I couldn't do it. <laughs> Save you the suffering. When I was younger, I always did it for half an hour a day. Why, sometimes I believed as many as six impossible things before breakfast. We've all pretty much heard that quote, right? Yep. The idea of, of, of imagining and believing six impossible things before breakfast. Give me one impossible thing, someone. I win the lottery. You win the lottery. All right, could we make that possible? Yes. Love that, thank you. There was an old man who lived in a village. He was very, very lonely and very alone. He was a grumpy, mean, unkind man. You see, when he was a young, young boy, his mother screamed at him, you're a horrible child. I wish I'd never had you. You're such a mean, unkind child. Now I know, what mother would ever do this to someone? Well, the person who it was done to. So she was passing on what she had been told and what she had known. Ernest Holmes says that all humankind is more or less following the pattern of thought in which it is immersed. All humankind is following the pattern of thought in which it is immersed, your thoughts, my thoughts, your next door neighbor's thoughts, the neighbor around the block that you don't even know, your family's thoughts, the things you've been told, the things they've been told, your community's thoughts, your city's thoughts, your country's thought, the world's thoughts. You are immersed, you can't see them, but you also can't see the air that you're breathing. You're immersed in thought. And thought builds upon itself, and when there's enough momentum around a particular thought, it becomes what is called a belief. 
And so there's all these random thoughts around you. And then there's the many thoughts that you magnetize because of your experience that become predominant and become what would be called the precedent for your life, the experience that you expect to have. We start out so free. And unbeknownst to ourselves, over time, we become bound. And then our spiritual path becomes about simply becoming unbound and returning to that freedom. And so I say to you, anything is possible for you. And a part of you says, yes, absolutely, that's true. And you feel that connection. You feel that, that something, I call, that's what I call God, that life force, that yes inside of you. But then at the same time, or sometimes seconds following that something other voice, rises up and says, mm, not likely, and hence becomes your experience. Yes, I can. I feel powerful and connected. And then precedent, past experience, other people's ideas, comes in to your thought, to your atmosphere, to the radio channel to which you're tuned, and it pulls you out. It makes you change your mind. It makes you disconnect. Give me another impossible thought in someone. That I don't worry for one day. <laughs> All right. That grumpy old man, not only, only did his mother influence his experience, but when he was a little boy, all the kids at school thought the same thing. And even the teachers thought he was a horrible little boy. And so he fulfilled what he was told to be, and he got in fights, and he'd throw stones at the kids that would speak his name badly or make fun of him. And he became the outcast. He became what they said was true about him. You know, one person lands in a challenge where there appears to be no solutions, and they agree with it, and it, it slashes their dreams and it robs them of the possibility, and they accept mediocrity, and they just find themselves kind of dissolved into all of those voices until they lose themselves. And then the very next person can face the same situation amongst and surrounded by the same negative, disempowering thoughts, and something happens in her where suddenly she can rise up and say, I will do this. She does one thing that makes her able to do that. She does one thing. I'm not going to tell you yet, but you can think about it. <laughs> do you remember in April, if you were with us, we were referencing a book called The Soul of Money by Lynn Twist. A wonderful, wonderful book. And we talked about there being three myths, three lies that we are immersed in that really sets the precedent for most people's experience of life. The first lie was that there's not enough. And we have to continue to look at that one and see where is that idea playing out? The second lie was that more is better. And we definitely are immersed in a culture where getting more, getting more, getting more is the game. But those who have all that they could have and more still can suffer in existential pain and realize that it didn't do the job. And then the third one was, that's just the way it is. And it's another way to define this thing called precedent. Where in your life, and let's revisit this again, let's go a layer deeper. If you asked yourself this question a month and a half ago, ask it again. Where am I trapped in believing that's just the way it is. Where am I consciously or unconsciously taking that past experience and no matter how much I don't want to, I keep recycling it. Just listen. That's what we're talking about. That's the precedent that we want to overcome. That grumpy old man, he got old and he got grumpier. And it got to a point as he became a man where 
when he was walking down the streets of the village, head down, not even meeting other people's gaze, people would cross the street just to not be near him. He had believed himself to be so flawed, so broken, so horrible, that he became repulsive. And they all agreed. So here's this one soul walking, disconnected, alone, living out what he's been told to the point where people can't even get in. Living the past, living what he's told over and over and over. I want another impossible thought. Who's got one? World peace. World peace, that truly is impossible. Good call. <laughs> World peace. Principle. What is that? Principle is greater. Precedent is, how, how does this phrase go? Principle is not bound by precedent. So what is principle? Let's look at that for a moment. It's the law. The law that exists within nature. It's the law that exists within math. It's the law that exists within music. It's spiritual laws. It's, it's things that are uh, provable, absolute, and impersonable. This is the key point for us today. It doesn't matter who uses it. It does not have preference over anyone to the other. It is said universal principles are never respecters of person. The universe has no favorites. Breathe that in, because that's an impossible thought for some of you. You are convinced that the world has favorites. Some of you have been told that this thing called God has chosen ones, and others that aren't. You have been told that there is something out there that absolutely is keeping score. And yet this moment, I invite you to literally release that precedent and consider the idea that spiritual principles and the use of them, anyone can and everybody does. An example, fire. There's a principle in fire. Fire does what fire does. One person will take fire and use it for good to heat an entire village. One person will use fire to destroy. Fire has no choice, right? That's an example of what principle is. It just is. And the person that is using it becomes the dictator and the director of what it becomes and how it's used. It's interesting. Love is love. That is a principle. It is a universal truth. Love is. And yet because of people's conditioning, someone can be told, I love you and their heart flowers open in joy, someone else can be told, I love you, and they cringe in pain. Isn't that interesting? The same word has a completely different impact. It's the person that's using it and experiencing it and looking through their past stories about it. But the principle of love remains universal, the same. Beauty is beauty. Freedom is freedom. These are universal truths and experiences of the one spirit. And our work, our spiritual path, is to unravel and to continue to dissolve what we've made up about these ideas so that you may have an authentic, pure experience of it. See, the precedent is the past. Principle is now. So when we're unconscious, we're being run by our old stories, by our old beliefs, by the way that it just is. But whenever we can line ourselves up with principle, capital P principle, we get into the now moment and you avail yourself to a fresh power. You avail yourself to something that is unformed, unformed substance that will say, you can use this to create a new idea about yourself. This is possible for you. Shakespeare says in Hamlet, for there is nothing, either good or bad, but thinking makes it so. Brilliant Shakespeare. Nothing 
good or bad, just thinking that makes it so. So we get ourselves, we do the work, we do the meditation, we do the prayer, we do the communion, we do the practice, we do the contemplation, so that we can get ourselves to that pure present moment connection where something new can be experienced. That's when principle overrides the past and offers you the opportunity to create a new. This grumpy old man, one day, he woke up. And before he put his feet on the floor, he said, I'm done being this. I'm done. And before the feet hit the floor, he made a decision. He did the one thing that you can do. You can make a decision. And he decided he was going to be happy. Now that's ridiculous, right? <laughs> this man, in a complete town of people that were all convinced how horrible he was, and he was convinced too. Loads of evidence, filing cabinets of proof against him. Filing cabinets of proof against you that you could never make more than 30,000 or 50,000 or 80,000 or whatever limit. Filing cabinets of proof, family history that says, we don't do that. We don't become successful. We don't step off the, the path of mediocrity. Filing cabinets. And century, I mean, uh, um, generations of history and ancestry to back up those stories. That's what this man had. And yet something in him said, I'm done. I'm making a decision to be happy. And he put his feet on the ground. Was it easy? No. He walked in the direction of his decision over and over and over again. And did he make the decision once? No. He made that decision a thousand times and then a thousand times more. And every time he stepped back into the old, when he noticed it, he made the decision to walk the path of the new idea. And that new path wasn't even like a groove in the mind. It was so thin. It was a whisper. And the old path was like the Grand Canyon grooves in the brain, so deep and so proven and trodden upon. Is that right? Trodden? Is that even a word? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Sounded good in the mid now. But he walked that thin little path, one step at a time, decide, decide, decide. You see, when you decide to become something new, that's just the first step. Then you have to take every step in its direction. And that's where it becomes hard, because you're moving this way, but the pull of the other, the pull of the very people that you have to wake up and meet who represent the precedent are right there. Good morning. Good morning. And it's so seductive, isn't it? Because they look the same. And they've got that silly smirk on their face. Or they're wearing that stupid nightshirt that's filthy. Who knows? There's something there that just wants to trigger the whole past. And it's in that moment where we say, Precedent is not, it is not greater than principle. Where is that damn line? Oh, principle is not bound by precedent. Precedent, <laughs> God. In that moment, you say, principle is not bound by precedent. That which is before me is the past. And the principle that I'm standing in is a new idea. You see, the mind that created the problem is the mind that can create the solution or uncreate the problem or create something that just walks you in a complete different direction. It's the same mind and it has access to pure power, pure possibility. It really is true. There's nothing you cannot do. Give me an impossible thought, please. Somebody online said they want to win a Grammy. They want to win a Grammy. Impossible, <laughs> we say. Or possible, <laughs> we say. Beautiful. That's number five, by the way. We need one more impossible thought, so be thinking. We realize deep in our soul that nothing, nothing, nothing is written in stone. 
and that you really do have the power. And I get it, I get it, that there's times when it fe feels so insurmountable. The mountain is just too high. It's not for me to do this lifetime. I can't. Whatever stories you've been telling yourself that keep you down at the bottom unchanging, they will override unless you do the work of getting yourself related to the principle of God, to the principle of life, to the principle of infinite possibility. If you will realign and realign and realign, you will begin building that muscle inside of you. And if you fall down and you get yourself back up and you realign, and when that voice says, I've tried this a hundred times, then you dig deeper for the voice that says, go for 101. Go for 102. Do not stop until you become who you want to be. To me, what I'm talking about in a very, very different language the whole time here in my experience in being is I want to be the expression of God. I want to be that love. I want to be that healing power. I really do. Like, I never outed that, but like in my journal, in my meditations, I'm like, I want my hands to heal people. I think that could be cool. I just want to do it because it's cool. <laughs> right? Jesus did it. I can do it. That's my thought. I want to do that. That's impossible. I come from blue-collar Detroit, y'all. No one's walking around healing people with their hands. Nobody. Nobody is. Yet I have this impossible idea. And here's the key. I don't think it's me that can do it. That the I that I'm talking about has to surrender, move aside, so that something rises up that takes over and starts to build this new idea, this new something. The I that has been struggling to figure it out. The I that has been trying to push myself up the mountain and build those muscles. That's the I that I have to surrender. And then awakening inside of me is that I am presence, that capital I, that suddenly it just causes things to happen, the synchronicity, the things start to work in your favor. And this is what's really interesting, and, and see if this is you. You get about one third up that mountain, and it starts to become scary, <laughs> because suddenly there's not a lot of familiar people there. Your family, your friends, there's, there's, many of them didn't want to climb the mountain yet. And so all of a sudden you're up there and you're in a weird room on diversity looking at people that you don't know, going, huh, this is, this, this is it? It's at least one of your bits. But you get a one third up and, that, and, and you hit moments in the journey where it's like, I kind of want to go back. I don't want to go back. It's not as it's not as fulfilling. It doesn't stretch my soul as much, but it's familiar. And I can at least feel connected. And that's when we have to dig deeper into our spirit. That's when you've got to really name yourself as that something that's at the top of the mountain, your mountain. And take that next step. Just take that next step. I really want you to think about today, if not, if it's not coming to you today, I want you to find something that you deemed impossible for yourself. Maybe it's to change your body in some way. Maybe it's to take some trip that you wanted or to learn something or to have something that you'd love to own because it just feels good to your soul. I really want you to find something today and I want you to put it up against principle, the truth of life, the truth of infinite nature, your oneness with divinity, and see if you are willing to dissolve that, to transform that, and to become what you want, to surrender to whatever it is. Especially for some of us who are, for me, slightly over 50, you start to lose that something, you know what I mean? Like as we get older, we, we just start to, we can sometimes start to just really drop back into that's just the way it is. Mm -hmm. But God is ageless. 
Spirit is timeless. Spirit has all strength and all power now and forevermore. And it is not contingent upon how well your body does or doesn't move or what you, none of that. In fact, if you'll say yes to it, your body will feel youthful. It will come back to life. So what's our last impossible idea? Who's got one? Living in another country. Living in another country. Awesome. So, when it comes time to change precedent and line into principle, first step, you make a decision. Then, you allow yourself, you, you increase your expectancy. You increase the receiving of it. You increase, you open up a little bit more and then you just practice, 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 walk in the direction, speak in the direction, use the words of that path, consciously walk that path. That's the work of the world. If you do that work of the world, spirit will be in back of it, lining stuff up for you, making mountains move, making synchronous. There will be miracles that are working in the background, and it will look like, and people will go, how did you do it? And you will, oh, I just took one step and I took the next step and I kept this thought. Like you'll have few little ideas of what you did, but you'll know something magnificent met you long before you were halfway there. Long before you were halfway there. That's something magnificent. Oh. I give you eagle's wings. Yes? Yes. yes. Take a breath. Open your hands. Breathe. Big breaths. You might not have been breathing through that talk. And just like, oh my God, in the most loving place of your heart, what is it that precedent has said this is the way it is? And what is it that you really desire? Just find it and say yes to it. Say yes to it. Don't worry about the how. Not yours to figure out. Pure principle, capital P, present moment, right now, fresh, alive, no past, no future, the only word it speaks is yes, yes, and it's atomic in its energy, it's unbelievable in its infinite power, and it works perfectly for everyone, and I am that one, and you are that one, and we are that one. And we meet in the agreement of our divinity, of our holiness, of our wholeness, of our, of our innate ability to command this amazing principle and this pure power to move in a new direction where good is expanded, where love is experienced, where prosperity becomes your own, where that which lives on your heart becomes that which is unfolding in your life. That's what I say yes to today. So take a moment inside yourself, and if there is something, place your hand on your heart, and know that your hand on it is blessing it, and it is saying yes to it, and it is enlivening it, and it is causing it to bust through the cracks in the cement, and it is finding its way to the sunlight, because this moment is the moment that you say yes to a brand new impossible idea for you. Nothing is possible, impossible in God. Nothing is impossible in me. And I say thank you, Spirit. Thank you, Spirit. Thank you, Spirit. That's what makes you grow, your gratitude. Thank you. So great.
Vigilant for our good. Vigilant for our God. It's synonymous. Be vigilant for it. In gratitude, I release this prayer knowing it's done. And so it is. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Mark. Thank you. Thank you so much. And so now is our time of offering here at Cityside, and will you please join me to uh, speak our blessing together. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, all that I receive, and all that I am. And we're so grateful for your gifts, and just know that these gifts are what allow us to be here today. And I would also invite you to take Mark's message today into your giving today and see if you can maybe confront that idea of, is it impossible for me to stretch a little bit more in my giving and confront that with spiritual principle, with the principle of infinite abundance in this universe? Thank you. Oh, and, oh, and text to give, thank you, and live streamers too. I always forget that they're changing the slides behind me, so... Um, text to give at 312-757-8111. You can also give online at www.cityside.me forward slash donate. And the bracelets. Um, we've got these bracelets here for you, and we'll be handing them out with the offering here today. Um, there's also more in back, so please don't take just one for yourself. Take one for a friend or many friends. And uh, give those out throughout the day. We want, we're want. we knowing that there is expansion here because there's so much love that this place is just booming and expanding. And we can do that with your help, so thank you. gifts, the amazing Hannah Lee, Greg Woods, and Schaefer Brown are going to be playing at Common Ground Tuesday, June 5th. There's a $10 cover, so if you like his groove here, check him out there. That's mine too, so is Eric and Phil. Yeah. All right, even better, yeah, so check that out. It's brilliant. Um, support our amazing band. We love them to death. <laughs> 7.30. Oh, so, yeah, what time is it? Sorry, it's hard for me to see it on here. So that's at 7.30? 7.30. 7.30. You can call the reservations, too. They're on me about that, even though you don't have to. Okay. <laughs> well, yeah, what Greg said. 
All right. And uh, of course, we've got our new name, Cityside Spiritual Community. We've got our new location, which is right here. And we've got our new website, so please check it out. It's brilliant. It's amazing. Um, there's all kinds of really cool stuff on there. Check it out. Post it on Facebook and Instagram. Share it with your friends. And um, also, we are doing our virtual meet and greet every first Monday of the month from 7.30 to 8.30 p.m. That is um, tomorrow, night. tomorrow night. Yeah, yes. that's yes. awesome. Yeah. yeah, actually, let me hand it over to the man who's doing it. So you can register to join the virtual meet and greet cityside.me slash start hyphen here. You can just register that. And the meet and greet is our version of what we used to do called Rap with the Rev, where once a month we, <laughs> we get together and just sit in a circle, especially for new people who are new to the philosophy or people who just want to get reconnected. First Monday, we meet on a Zoom call. You just, wherever you are at home, we, if you register, we send you the link. And we're going to hang out for about an hour. We're we'll do some meditation, we're gonna do a little spiritual practice, and then you're gonna to get to tell your spiritual story and hear others and share in that. So it's a nice way to just hang out, meet, and get to know other people at Cityside. So our first one's tomorrow night. Please register and join me. We'll have a nice time together. It is a lot of fun. I'm, I'm actually having flashbacks of my first rap with the ride with Mark like six years ago, I think it was now. So, all right, and again, if you're, it's your first time here, please fill out that yes and card so that we can get to know you, so that we can uh, get you on our newsletter and tell you about all the cool things that we have going on here. And that's it for me. Thank you, Ross. I'm so excited to go. Let's get up on our feet. I am a friend of God. that has been expanded today, for these amazing musicians and all the love that they give us, for all the volunteers and the ministers that have been continuing to anchor the consciousness of this thing called Cityside Spiritual Community. For each one of you here, I know that you walk in a new direction in the week ahead. You literally step out of this building and your feet are moving in a new direction, guided by God, guided by love, guided by the desire that is of your heart. It is activated, it is renewed, it is restored, it has been replaced, it is absolutely beating and magnetizing unto itself. Thank you, sweet spirit, thank you, sweet spirit, and so it is. God.